are now going to work through lecture example 3.1. And this example shows you how to calculate the impact of a change in credit policy on profit. So if a company changes their credit policy, what effect will that have on their profit? Let's work through the information provided in the question. Price PTY Limited is considering a change of credit policy. Current annual sales are 4 million rand and debtors take on average 40 days to pay their accounts. At present, 70% of customers qualify for a 2% discount and bad debts amount to 120,000 rand. The new proposal is to grant credit on 5 slash 30 net 60. Now guys, please note that means they are going to offer a 5% discount if the account is settled within 30 days. So a 5% discount if you pay within 30 days. However, the account must be settled within 60 days. The relaxation in credit is expected to increase sales by 25%. Bad debts are expected to increase to 160,000 Rand. 80% of customers are expected to take advantage of the discount. And you can assume that the increase in sales will result in additional inventory of 150,000 Rand and additional creditors of 80,000 Rand. Price PTY Limited makes use of their overdraft facility to finance working capital, which is perfect. They are using current liabilities to finance current assets. Interest is charged at a rate of 12%, and the contribution margin is 30%. Then in the required guise, you need to calculate the impact of the proposed change in credit policy on profit. Now if you go back to your lecture notes, the first thing that we need to consider is any change in contribution or any change in gross profit. Now guys, we saw in this question that by changing the credit policy, sales are expected to increase by 25%. So if you look at the calculation below, if sales are going to increase by 25% and current sales, above we saw current sales are 4 million rand. So if sales are going to increase by 25%, that means sales will increase by 1 million rand. So instead of having sales of 4 million, the company will now have sales of 5 million rand. Now guys, you need to be careful. When we are trying to calculate the impact on the company's profit, we can't just take the increase in sales into account. Because remember, if sales increase, variable costs will also increase. And that is why you've been given this contribution margin of 30%. That is so that you can calculate the increase in contribution. So contribution will increase by 300,000 Rand as a result of the change in credit policy. And you can include that in your calculation above. So obviously, guys, if contribution increases, that will have a positive impact on profit. So that is an income there. There's additional contribution of 300,000 Rand. So please be careful. You can't just include the increase in sales in your calculation. Because if sales increase, variable costs will also increase. So you don't just include the increase in sales in your calculation. Instead, you include the increase in contribution because that takes into account the fact that variable costs will also increase. So your contribution will only increase by 300,000 Rand. Please, if you go back to the lecture notes, you'll see I said to you when evaluating the change in a credit policy, you are going to consider the change in contribution. That's what we looked at in this question. As an alternative, guys, they might not give you the contribution ratio, but instead they might give you the gross profit percentage. But exactly the same logic applies. You can't just take the increase in sales into account in your calculation, because if sales increases, cost of sales will also increase. So instead, we take the increase in gross profit into account in our calculation. So you can see that discussion over here. 
As an alternative, you may be given the gross profit percentage instead of the contribution margin. The same logic applies because if sales increase, cost of sales will also increase. So if you are provided with the gross profit percentage, you will perform the calculation in exactly the same way as we did above. So you just multiply by the gross profit percentage and you will include the increase in gross profits in your calculation. All right, guys. So don't include the increase in sales in the calculation. You include the increase in contribution or the increase in gross profits. And that will obviously have a positive impact on profit. So it is a positive amount. Then, next we need to look at the change in discounts. So if you go back to the information provided in the question. Before the change in credit policy, 70% of customers qualified for a 2% discount. So if we want to calculate the discount, it's going to be 4 million multiplied by 70% multiplied by 2%. So that is the discount before the change in credit policy, the current discount. 4 million times 70% times 2%. Then what will the new discount be? We were told that 80% of customers are expected to take advantage of the discount. So 80% are going to pay within 30 days and qualify for a 5% discount discount. But just be careful now, your sales aren't 4 million rand anymore, sales have increased to 5 million rand. And after the change in credit policy, 80% of customers will pay within 30 days and qualify for a 5% discount. So guys, that gives you the new discount. So you can see by changing the credit policy, there's a 144,000 Rand increase in discounts. And that will obviously have a negative impact on profit because if discounts increase, that is an expense, it will decrease your profit. So just include that in your calculation. Please note, guys, we are always looking at the change in our calculation over here. It is the change in contribution or the increase in contribution. It is the increase in discounts. So it's not the new discount or the old discount. It's the change. It's the difference. Because we are trying to evaluate how the change in credit policy will impact on their profits. Then next, you need to consider a change in collection costs. So if there are any admin costs involved in debt collection, you need to consider the current collection costs, the new collection costs, and any change in collection costs will impact on profit. So that will need to be taken into account in your calculation. Please note, in our question, we didn't have any collection costs, so that is not applicable. Then we need to look at a change in bad debts. So before the change in credit policy, bad debts amounted to 120,000 Rand. And after the change, bad debts are expected to increase to 160,000 Rand. So if we look at this calculation, current bad debts are 120,000 Rand, new bad debts 160,000 Rand. So the increase in bad debts is 40,000. So it's the increase that we take into account in our calculation. Now obviously if bad debts increase by 40,000 Rand, that is going to have a negative effect on profit. Then finally, we need to consider a change in finance costs. So first guys, you are going to have to calculate whether there's been an increase or a decrease in net working capital. Now, net working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. So work out whether working capital has increased or decreased. Then, if working capital has increased, 
that means the company is going to have to finance that increase in working capital. It means your debtors balance has increased, inventory has increased. The company is going to have to finance that. So any increase in working capital will result in increased finance costs. On the other hand, if working capital decreases, that will result in a decrease in finance costs. Let's have a look at this calculation. So in order to calculate the increase in finance costs, first we need to calculate the net movement in working capital, and then we are going to multiply that by the company's overdraft rate. So in step one, first we are calculating the net movement in working capital. Now guys, if you go back to the information provided in the question, they already gave you the additional inventory that's going to be required and also the additional creditors. So we know inventory is going to increase by 150,000 Rand as a result of this change and creditors will increase by 80,000 Rand. However, we don't know how much debtors are going to change by. So first we need to calculate the movement in our debtors balance. Then once we have the movement in the debtors balance, we can take into account the movement in inventory and also the movement in creditors in order to get the net movement in working capital. So, the debtors balance has not been given. However, we can calculate the debtors balance by restating the following formula as follows. So if you guys go back to your formulas, you know that we calculate the debtors collection period by taking debtors, dividing by credit sales, and multiplying by 365. That is the formula that we use to calculate the debtors collection period. However, we are not trying to calculate the debtors collection period. We are trying to calculate the debtors balance. So you are just going to restate this formula in order to calculate the debtors balance. So if you want the debtors balance, you take credit sales, you multiply by the debtors collection period, and you divide by 365. So let's calculate the current debtors balance before the change in credit policy. So before the change in credit policy, credit sales amounted to 4 million rand, and debtors took on average 40 days to pay their accounts. So it's a very simple calculation. Credit sales, 4 million rand. Debtors take on average 40 days to pay their accounts and divide by 365. So the current debtors balance before the change in credit policy is 438,356. Then we are trying to calculate the movement in working capital. So we need to compare the current debtors balance to the new debtors balance and that will then give us the movement. So what will the new debtors balance be? Well, first we know that sales are going to increase by a million rand. So credit sales will increase from 4 million rand to 5 million rand. Then, guys, we know that 80% of customers are going to take advantage of the discount. So 80% are going to pay within 30 days so that they can get this 5% discount. And obviously, the remaining 20% will pay in 60 days. So what you need to do first is calculate the new debtors collection period. 80% of customers will pay in 30 days so that they can get the discount, and the other 20% need to settle in 60 days. So the debtors collection period is going to change to 36 days. So with the old policy, before the change in credit policy, it was 40 days. It's now going to be 36 days. So if we want to calculate the new debtors balance, we take credit sales. But just be careful, credit sales are now 5 million rand and not 4 million rand. And you multiply by your debtors collection period over 365. So multiply by 36, which is the new debtors collection period over 365. So that is the new debtors balance. So what do we need to do? We are trying to calculate the movement in working capital. So calculate the movement in the debtors balance. Take the new balance, deduct the old balance, 
and you can see debtors are going to increase by 54,795 rand. We were told in the question, inventory is going to increase by 150,000 rand and creditors will increase by 80,000 rand. So in order to calculate the net increase in working capital, you take the increase in debtors, add the increase in inventory, deduct the increase in creditors, because remember, if creditors increase, that means the company has an extra 80,000 rand available from creditor finance that they can use to finance the increase in debtors and the increase in inventory. So the net effect is they only need to try and find additional finance for this balance over here. So guys, you were not given the debtors balance. So calculate the current debtors balance, the new debtors balance, get the movement. You were given the movements in inventory and creditors. So take all of those movements into account and calculate the net increase in working capital. That is always step one of your calculation. We are now just going to multiply that by the overdraft rate. So if you go back to the information provided in the question, they have an overdraft rate of 12%. And guys, you were specifically told that they make use of the overdraft facility to finance working capital. So the increase in working capital will be financed at a rate of 12%. So all you do is you take the increase in working capital, you multiply by 12%, and that gives you the increase in finance costs. And obviously, guys, if finance costs are increasing, that will have a negative impact on profit. So take that into account in your calculation. Then there's just one other thing that I want to discuss before we move on. In this question, you were specifically told that Price PTY Limited makes use of the overdraft facility to finance working capital. So when we calculated the finance cost, we used the overdraft rate in our calculation. Please note, if the overdraft rate is not given, you should then use the WAC in your calculation. But please remember, the WAC is actually the cost of long-term finance. That's why it's preferable to rather use the overdraft rate. So let's just wrap this question up. If they change their credit policy, the impact on profit will be an increase of 101.025. So profits will increase by this amount if they change their credit policy. So obviously this change has a positive impact on profit, so they should go ahead and they should change the policy. So the change results in an increase of 101.025 in profit, so they should therefore change their credit policy.